Perfect. Okay, folks, what's happening? Dara Gibbs here, the Happy Coach. Welcome to the Happy Podcast. I'm joined today by CJ Hampton, professional footballer for Mansfield Town. Myself and CJ were on a live Instagram there about two weeks ago. Well, obviously, depending on when you're listening to this. And we had a fantastic conversation and very insightful for a life of voice into the life of CJ being a pro footballer and got a hell of a lot of fantastic feedback from it. So we said we'll pop on the podcast, elaborate a lot more on what we already discussed and we crack into basically. But for anyone who doesn't know CJ guys, he plays in Mansfield Town, which is a football team in League Two in England. And correct me if I'm wrong here, CJ, and just after getting some stuff off the internet, just make sure I'm right. <laughs> um, but basically, CJ started his career obviously in Ireland, went over to Watford for a trial, then played his youth career for Sheffield United, kind of in and about with a lone, lone team, and then ends up in Mansfield then basically. And he has 172 appearances for Mansfield at the moment with 20 goals and 21 assists. And last season, 2019, he was in team of the season as well. So CJ has a fantastic career so far. And I'm delighted to have him on the podcast because if there's anything like the life, you're going to get absolutely incredible content from him. So CJ, thanks for coming on the podcast, but I appreciate it. No worries, Darren. No worries. How are you going? Good? I'm all good. I'm all good, my man. I'm all good. Um, but yeah, I suppose we might just do a little quick recap over something, what we spoke about on the live, just for the people who may not have watched it. Yeah. So like, in terms of, obviously you went to Watford for a trial from Ireland. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to just give maybe a bit like your own story on it? I come from Ireland over to Watford to Sheffield then to Mansfield. Yeah, yeah. So obviously when I was in Ireland, I was going to play with you in Cork and I yeah. played there. I don't know how long was that Cork? A couple of years, isn't it? Four or five mm. years it was there. Yeah, about that. Anyway. We, we got to some, we had some good games to be fair. It was the semi-final of the SFI Cup or something or the quarter-final mm. at home. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over. We played, you came out, played centre back. <laughs> remember that, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but obviously started there, um, then came over to England to go to some development centre thing. It's called, uh, what was it called? Watford Centre of Excellence. So I went there for a bit, done school, which would be the equivalent to doing the, the Leaving Certain Island. So okay. I'd like finished off doing, because obviously when I moved over here, I only just done my junior set. Mm. So obviously then I had to do finish off school and I finished off over here, went to some centre of excellence, which was a Watford one, and started playing there. And then after after halfway through the first season or after the first season, then got invited to Watford for a trial. And obviously they were looking to give three of us there at the time. They were looking to give us they were gonna give us something, but then they because they've got no twenty ones and that, it wouldn't be a wise move. I said if mm. you get something else, get something else. And luckily then when I obviously the people that asked us in at Watford, the head of academy then moved to Sheffield United. Yeah. And he told us three to go up there on trial. So obviously we all went up there and then had a week up there and they after the first week they obviously sat us down and then let us know how we did and what they think and then they, they asked they invited me back for another month trial. Mm. So obviously I went back up there, played a couple of games, like some of the games I played were against like I played against Sunday night time and we had the players like when I played Phil Barsley was playing a right back, so I was on the left and that was one of my first trial games. So I was like, Oh, what am I supposed to do here? So it was yeah. obviously experienced pro. Ended up doing very well that game. And then obviously they, they invited me, kept, like, kept me on for a bit longer. And then after about two months there playing games and training, they said they want to offer me a six months non-contract basis kind of thing. So like mm. get paid for six months. But obviously would it, they could let me go at any time kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a view to get a priority in the season. It was only because the, cause the manager at the time, I had no manager when I was on trial. They just signed yeah, the yeah, manager. Yeah. And then obviously they got... They were, what took so long and me getting the, the like going up there for the six months was um, the manager so as soon as he come in he said okay yeah and then went in and then for that six months I done really well and mm. within three months they've offered me a pro so I don't know well in that yeah done well in that sense and yeah that's how I got, got my, my first pro Chef U played yeah. very well in some of the like the derby games up there obviously played Chef Wednesday night in the 21s yeah 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 played with some of the like players that now are playing in the Premier League like mm. uh, Dominic Cavalier and David Brooks and David Payne back then. So yeah, it is. It was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah, and um, I suppose like this something I actually didn't ask on the when we're going live. What like w- like explain a day in the life when you obviously pre lockdown. Like what was it like being an actual professional footballer? Say like give an example of your week, I suppose, just so people. Yeah, I go. I go. 
go through. So obviously we played games on Saturdays, yeah, and then like some results would depend if we had a Monday off or not. So obviously we try yeah. to get results, so we get a Monday off, so that'd be Sunday Monday off. Oh, if you want, Tuesday. you'd have Sunday Monday off, would you? Yeah, so I'm managing like, <laughs> to, to get an extra couple of days, or if you get a good result away to like a high team and get a draw, yeah. they might say, oh, you know, we'll give you Monday off. Ah, nice one. So sometimes we would like some. Sometimes we wouldn't train on Mondays, and some days we would. But on a Monday, yeah. like if we were training for a full week, we'd obviously normally we'd have a set time to come in. Like this season, it's been like half nine breakfast. So we'd, mm. we'd like you'd have to be in fifteen minutes before. So you'd have to be in at nine fifteen, get changed, mm. and then walk down to the canteen to get breakfast at half nine. Yeah. But I, on a day, I'd probably wake up at half eight, quarter to nine. Because mm. I only only live around the corner from the training ground. I'd normally go yeah. for for a tracksuit on, a pair of shorts, and a jumper. And whatever shoes there, the comfortable ones, from mm. one, get in the car, do the five minute journey and then into training. And then obviously all our kit is laid out in the change rooms and that. So we ah, get changed. Right. Get changed. Sometimes before breakfast, if I get in a bit early, I'll try to do a bit of gym. Mm. Get in the gym. And then if not, just go have breakfast, chill out, then we'll they'll have like we'll have time. So we'll have to be up in the like pre ab and activation room. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah like 10, 15, so everyone has to be up there. We'd do that, do our stretches, do our band work, so like all that kind of stuff. And then after that, we'd be out like 15 minutes later, we'd all have to walk out together onto the training pitch and then mm. start training, to be fair. Like train for two hours. Obviously, then yeah. you want to stay stay, stay out after you. Like some people would do some shooting, crossing mm. defenders would do defending bits, like heading, deal with crosses and stuff like that. So, so if you wanted some extras, you could do it. And then the only different days we have is Tuesdays and Thursdays. So after training, we'd have probably half an hour to lunch. We'd have lunch and then have another half hour after that to, to let the food settle. And then we'd go in the gym for an hour and we'd have set oh, food okay. for half an hour. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Tuesdays, Tuesdays we'd done no, normally lower bodies because it was harder session because of Wednesday, Wednesday off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on a Thursday, we'd do upper bodies. Mm. So obviously closer to a game, you don't want to be really touching your legs. Yeah. So, so you do more upper body and physical work up, up there. So yeah. That's probably life, and then you get ready for a game on Saturday. Mm. And it like it is like the games are always Saturday. There's never Sunday games, is there? Uh, since I've been here, I don't think I've had a Sunday game. You know, I've, actually I have. I have yeah. had a, I've had an FA Cup game on a Sunday. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes what? FA Cup games, depending on who you play, and like if you're playing against a team in your own league, they don't like it's normally just a Saturday game. You play t- games teams higher, like a couple of leagues higher or lower. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Play, you, they'll try and mix it up so they can get some TV broadcasted on it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I get you. So they're the games. Uh, yeah, so hardly play on Sundays, just Saturdays and Tuesdays, really. Or Saturdays yeah. and Tuesdays. Okay, that's interesting. And in terms of the training, like, so obviously do gym Tuesday and Thursday. And is the training, like, say, one day conditioning type training, lot, getting lots of touches on the ball, you know, focusing on just, you know, your technical skills. And then another day might be all shape and. and set pieces for example or is it yeah. different days like that what ways it work exactly so it's, like, it's like that we have different days for different things so like say if mm. we had a game on Saturday then to two hours Sunday and then the people that didn't play on a Saturday would have a harder session on Monday than the people that played Yeah. so what yeah, they do yeah. over here is a thing called second day recovery so obviously your body's still recovering from the from covering mm. that 11, 10, 11k on a Saturday Yeah. So the people that played in the game would probably go in do a little bit on the pitch and then it would go away and then go to the local fitness center to see either jump in the gym, uh, jump in the pool or a bike or something like that just to keep mm. the legs going and flush it out. And the people that don't play will go in and do like beer running and then have like harder games, like have like five or side games or something. Or yeah, 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 yeah. And then they'll be a tougher and they'll bring some of the younger lads up to make the numbers up. Because obviously you're, gonna, yeah, you're, yeah, missing, yeah. you're missing 10, 11 from the game on Saturday. So you, they've got to make the numbers up and they'll just do that. And then Tuesday's the toughest day. So we'll go in We'll do a lot of like possessions. We'll do games. We we'll do a lot mm. of running, and then they'll do bigger. They'll do bigger games. So like it'll be more like say nine v nines on maybe a eleven side pitch or nine v nine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut so off the like, fullbacks or something. Yeah, so you're you're covering you're covering more distance in mm. bigger areas. So you have got to run more just to yeah. get the, the distance up. So they like us to hit hit a certain distance on a Tuesday and stuff like that. So Tuesdays will be quite hard, and then normally I stay out on Mondays and Tuesdays doing little bits of exercise, shooting and stuff like mm. that, and even Thursdays. Well, every day if I can, just depending on how the body feels. And then Thursdays is kind of more of like, it's, it's tough, but not as tough as the other two, like Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you still got to get your, your distances in. So it's like probably small side of games again or mm. sessions, depending on what the manager feels like it. And sometimes it would like, 
this season we've been doing shape on Thursdays as well. So mm. we'll do defensive structure on, on a Thursday. And then yeah. on a Friday when we're going to, we'll do more offensive stuff. So we'll do attacking yeah. plays or, or he'll do attacking threads. Like he'll mix them up to do one one day, one the next, so we get both in. <clears throat> and then fr- Friday, obviously, whatever one we didn't do on a Thursday, like mm. say we'll do offensive on a Thursday, we'll do yeah. offensive on a Friday. And then after we've done that, he'll send the players that probably won't play to do five O's and the players that will play for set pieces and like different tactics yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and patterns of play or it'll keep the whole squad together and just like everyone will do patterns of play. So like different ways of playing through the opponents, mm. how they find the weak spots and then set pieces and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, man. And in terms of the gym work, is it just like, are you giving individual programs or are you like putting like a group of three or four and you're doing the same stuff and you just kind of rotate around in what way does the gym part work? Uh, so this season it's been like set groups so there have been like seven, eight in a group mm. or, or even ten in a group and we'll go in and then like lowers you'll have you'll have your own program so that the physio and the sports scientists will go through what you need to work on. Yeah. So like we do we do testing and that in the summer. So when we mm. come back to say which mo- like one leg could be more stronger than the other or you yeah, might yeah, have yeah. more dominant side and they'll try even it up or make you strong your weaker one stronger. Yeah, and based on like that, so they'll have set programs with you, and then you just do weight. Like obviously, you you go up and weight when you can, and when you feel yeah, 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 yeah. And what yeah. kind of stuff would you be doing in the gym? Like we we lot like single leg, you know, remain deadlift, single leg squats, or what? what, what so yeah, my program would consist of a deadlift. I normally yeah. use the trap bar. If you know, yeah, it's, you probably do yeah, trap bar, deadlift, uh, squats, back squats, um, Bulgarian split squats. Yeah. Uh, we we'll do side lunges, weighted side side lunges, and um, with dumbbells. And um, what else would I normally do? Um, hamstring curls. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stuff yeah. like that. Uh, just just little bit. That's that's mainly my program to be fair. Mm. Is and then I just load up and weights when I can. Happy day. That's cool. And what's the and like what are the coaches like in terms like because obviously you're training pretty much every day. So for like Sunday, maybe Monday. Yeah. So, like, you know, when it's getting closer to the game, like, would you be instructed to, you know, say if you're doing shape, for example, and on Friday, like, I just know for myself, if I was training Thursday, I'm looking forward to the game and I try and train harder. But realistically, you probably should taper it off a little bit because you don't want to be going too hard because you won't be fresh for the game. Would you be instructed to, like, when you're doing particular things, say you're just doing shape, just to kind of shadow it rather than actually going full blast on a Friday the day before a game, or what way does that work? Yeah, so obviously, like, a lot of players know their own body, so they'll, like, yeah. get what they... So, like, say you go into a Thursday session, you know what you need out of a Thursday session, especially after the day off. Uh, yeah, you, like, yeah, yeah. you like to get all the, 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 the bad stuff out of your legs and, and get going. So, a mm. lot of players, will, you see a lot of players more energetic than others. Other players like to chill out a bit more, save, ah, save a bit, and go into, go into a Saturday. So, it depends on your body. I always try, try to train as hard as I can, because that's me personally. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Some some of the older players might want to have, like relax a bit more, and you mm. know they 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 know how to manage their body better than anyone else, or like anyone knows how to manage their own body. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. So you know you know when you've done enough and when you've not. So it's like yeah. whatever you feel comfortable. Like certain players might have a, a routine of doing hardly anything, and then will turn up on Saturday and be world class. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's kind of like I think it's more of a personal thing how you take that, but like yeah, when we do shaping that, like the the coaches will say either like oh only shadow. Or they'll like in like on a Thursday they might say like like they might put more into it so you could go like like actually go into it a bit like yeah yeah do, yeah. A, do, do it at a higher tempo, and then on on Fridays they might say oh I don't want to tone it down a bit like jog jog to here or jog to there or like that whereas other days you might sprint to that mm. destination to get there or so 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 yeah it's quite tapered down to be fair it's like yeah yeah, yeah. Play, players know how much they need to get out and then coaches if they know we've had a tough week say if we played a Saturday and Tuesday. It'll be more like walk through stuff, yeah, and like lightly going through stuff because they know we've had a hard week, so mm. it just that's how it's kind of kind of worked around. Yeah, that's cool. That's it. No, that's interesting, man. No, it's just obviously my coach background. I just I like um just getting informed on the way you do it because it's kind of cool. Yeah. For yourself, pers- I actually before I ask that question, I just kind of interested. So obviously you be playing away games stuff like that. Have you ever got like? Yeah awfully abused by a group of fans or just you know going to a place like I oh, just did not enjoy that match at all because the fans were just non-stop on us for the whole game uh, you know what you, you always get stick stick from the fans but do you know yeah. what I don't really know I don't really know as a person yeah, like, yeah, one yeah. of the games this season the young lads were saying I don't know if someone we played away but the young lads were, were saying after the game they got absolutely abused when they were warming up 
<laughs> but they're like, like, actually, to be fair, there was uh, when I went alone years ago. For that chef, when I went alone, went alone to Halifax. Yeah. And I was with uh, there was there was three of us from the club. So there was me, uh, a guy called Jules, and then a Premier League player now called Dale Brooks. And we we looked so young because we used to call it schoolboys. <laughs> like, what what time are you going to school and that used to always thrill us <laughs> so we'd be trying to warm up and we'd just be laughing to each other like yeah, what is yeah, this yeah. so yeah we used to always get a little bit of bad, bad on it. but this was from the home fans not even the away fans <laughs> so like you'd be there warming up and that and you'd just get getting, getting banter from it it's funny to be fair some of the comments yeah, 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 people yeah. come out with and that but I'm one of the ones that don't really notice any background I'm just focused on what mm. I gotta do yeah yeah uh, yeah it's, you go you when you do play away, you go to some hostile places where like it's a bit like oh like these fans are like gonna come down here and that or yeah, loud yeah, places. Yeah. And obviously because I play like the last couple of seasons I'm playing wing back, so obviously you take a lot of thrones and that. So you know when you do try to get the ball yeah, back yeah, 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 yeah. from people and that and they start saying things and you're like, oh, you start you just start you just gotta smile it off or laugh it off. Mm. So yeah, but yeah, you do you do go to places and you do feel like, oh, this is a bit bit of a yeah a shaky one. But you just gotta get through as a professional, you've got to f- focus on the game and get through it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's I know that's interesting because I haven't played in front of big crowds regularly, the odd time. And I was, yeah. obviously like you're not you're not used to it, like obviously you would be, oh geez, this is yeah um, overwhelming or whatever. But it's kinda of interesting your take on just focus on the game, which is really, really important. Yeah. You you do go away to places also like say like we play at home, we play we get normally five thousand and home like it feels loud, mm. but then you can go away to places like Plymouth or like places like that are higher when you're playing cup games in the leagues, mm. you get like fifteen, sixteen thousand there, you're like, Whoa, like that. That, yeah, sometimes yeah. for the first like minute or so, you take you get taken back for because you are not realizing how much noise and you're trying mm. to scream at your teammates because you're not used to screaming out <laughs> loud. And within, within five minutes of the game, your voice is gone. <laughs> but it's it's the ones where you got to use your awareness then and just just focus mm. and and like just focus on the game, yeah. Yeah, and just even talking to you there, CJ, you seem very driven and you know laser eyed focus, which obviously. It's something you need to be a professional footballer, I suppose. Right? Yeah. And, and any kind of, if you want to be a top level in anything you're doing, you have to kind of laser focus and discipline. Yeah. What kind of things do you do? Like you're saying there, like you always stay after training, keep your hearts in training. What kind of things do you be doing after training, or say stuff at home to improve your game, your mindset, your mobility, all that kind of stuff? So, so what I do at training would be like, depending on like where I think I'll be playing. So like if I was play, think I was going to play a wing back on the weekend, I'd go out and do extra bits of crossing and like coming in, shooting yeah. at different angles because obviously yeah. when you get played through, you got like you come in at a tighter angle, so you try to fire shots across the goal and mm. hopefully, obviously the keeper there, he'll save it. And then like, you know, when you parry it out into the middle of it, like, yeah, yeah, tap yeah. tappings for other players kind of thing. So you kind of work on loads of different things and like different patterns yourself, like of getting played in and crossing it early, crossing deep crosses, hanging them up. So the last year when I was playing wing back, I'd, I'd done a lot of work with the manager and the, the assistant on that kind of stuff. Mm. And then obviously I got moved to playing up front halfway through the season. And then I do a lot of shooting, like quick snapshots around the box, in yeah. the box, like different coming in from right foot, like across the goal, left foot across the goal, and just little mm. bit of that work on kind of most kind of finishes like that I could. And I always like doing it. So then it's like once you do something, it's repetition and you just get... Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you remember kind of... Form, yeah, it's just a habit of just like, you don't even sometimes need to look at the goal when you're finishing now and, and you know where the corners are. If you get me, you know exactly where you need to, to put yeah. the ball or just different kind of things. Yeah, when you get in situations of pre- like pressure in games, you, you can keep it calm and be, be mm. cool and collected. Yeah, that's cool. And in terms of food ways, do... Like, are you just advised of what foods to eat or do you get... Obviously, I know you get breakfast. You get lunch and dinner with the club as well, or do you do that stuff yourself at home? And what way does that work? Yeah, so obviously after training, we'll, we'll get food as well. So they'll, yeah. they'll cook for us. They'll cook meals. Like so, what they do normally is like they put on a like they normally go to a buffet. Like you get loads of things. So they'll have chicken, rice. Mm. They'll have a fish. They'll have veg, and then like different days to mix up. They might have potatoes one day, rice the yeah. next. They'll have chicken or different meat mm. or lasagna or something or you know, stuff like that. Spaghetti bolognese. And then they'll have different fishes like salmon, sea bass. They'll, they'll make, try and mix up every day different veg. So it's good. And then you can have some soup there if you want as well. Yeah. So we, you do get a, get a good variety. But yeah, on food wise, it's, it's more down to a personal thing. Like, yeah. Like if you want to go home every day and eat loads of crap and not look after your body, like go to McDonald's every night or mm. do this and do that, you're not going to give yourself the best chance of becoming the best athlete, are you? Yeah, exactly. So it's just one of them things where you got to manage it yourself. And you, you should, you should as a professional, be be looking after yourself. 
Yeah, of like course. You, you want to be able, you want to be able to play the sport you love for as long as possible. Mm. And the only way the only way you can really do that is by looking after your body, eating the right stuff, like feeling yourself, drinking a lot of water, just yeah. doing the right things. Hundred percent. And what advice would you give a young footballer, CJ? Like things to like good traits to have, or if they don't have them, traits to work on. Example, you know, obviously stay, keeping hydrated. Because I know when we were younger, there was little to no education or yeah. we weren't informed about basically just go out, ah, yeah, kick the ball, whatever like that. And like, that's not their fault, of course, but say for somebody who's listening, what are good things for a young footballer to work on and be doing on a regular basis? Just, just get into good habits of like, obviously feeling your body right, don't be drinking fizzy drinks and like, mm. You can, you can eat the odd sweet and that because like everyone has I have I have like crap food on, on days that like you know, mm. days off and that because ev- everyone's going to enjoy that stuff so you know yeah. you, like, you, can af- you can afford to have some bits of it but don't go crazy like every day or yeah, yeah, be, yeah, yeah. be doing an unnecessary thing especially if you like gain weight faster or anything like that you don't want to kill yourself in that way like treat yourself when you, when you can mm. but yeah any, any young fo- any young any professional like any young person like in any kind of profession that is coming up just 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 have the right attitude, like be willing to learn. Don't mm. be willing to say if someone's going to say something, not to take it on board and take it personal. Yeah. Like you can always take, if you think the information is personal, you don't like it, you don't always have to react in a way, like just take it on board or, or put it to the side if you don't think it's good enough for you. Yeah, but yeah, I get when you. Do, when you do get the advice, take it on board and actually listen to the people like above you or the people, mm. the experienced people, like you, like say if you're in an office job, the manager might say something, he's been there for 30 years, you might, help you out or tell you yeah. something for the day. Take, don't take it as you trying to have a go at you or, or take it in a personal way because sometimes that's what people do. They take things personally when sometimes someone's just trying to help out because sometimes when people do pass up information, it might not be the best at like, putting it across to you. Yeah. So Some people might may bring it across in an angry way. Some people apply it some, but yeah. they could be looking out for the best in you. So it's always, mm. it's always good to listen to what people have got to say because it, it will teach you something. Yeah. Hundred percent, and and it's always the best the best way to be. Attitude, attitude is always good as well. Like, just yeah. make sure you got good good attitude. It's like everyone will always know you then for having a good attitude and will be willing to work with you. Yeah, hundred so percent. Like, if if someone knows you're willing to do something, like they're gonna work with you all the time because they know you're willing to do it. Yeah, and you're not gonna like oh like say you'll do it and not turn up or or little thing things like that. So it's, it's, mm. yeah, attitude. Just, just work hard. Like, if you love something, yeah. just go for it. Don't, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. Yeah, you're the only, you're the only person that can tell yourself that you can't do anything. Don't let, yeah. like, even, even if your parents say it and they say, "Oh, why, why are you gonna try and do that?" Do you know I me? Mean? Like, even like some, some people, like you know, some kids will say a lot, like, like oh, "I want to be a footballer." Like, yeah, I was back, I was back in my primary school and thinking about it, thinking about it now. I, I done it. And probably some of the people in the class, even the teacher, probably laughing like, "That's not possible." Yeah, do you know, do you know how many people like make it as a Football, I mean, then when you think back and you're thinking actually I've, I've got to prove I've proved them wrong like I've went mm. to do what I wanted to do and I made sure I got there even even yeah. if you keep failing it could take you 100 fails to get that one little big success yeah 100% and that one big little big success will make the 100 fails feel worth it yeah 100% man and and you feel like you're going in the right direction it's like everyone fails fails, fails in life no matter what you do you're going to fail at some point not everyone's yeah. perfect not everyone's going to always get everything right and it's just how you overcome that and how you take that fail mm. If you take that fail personally, and and it, you can drag it down, and it'll make you not want to do what you want to do. You yeah. Take, you you like you flip it into a bad where a negative where you can flip it into a positive, and it can drive you that extra one percent that can get you a little bit further to where you want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I that, get that, you. That goes for that goes for any job. Like everyone always wants to be at the top in the job category. Like you, mm. you staff is nothing. You want to be a manager, and you want to be or a team leader. You don't want to be a manager. Yeah. You want to work work your way up the ladder. Every every job's got a ladder where you can work your way up, and it's just finding finding a way to get to the top of that ladder and doing everything you can, regardless of how long it takes you. If you get there at the end, like you could get there a day a day before you retire, but you've done it. You've done what you've set out to yeah. do. Do you get me? It's like you start off, start off at ten years old trying to do something. You might not get it to your fifty, but then mm. the satisfaction of actually getting there. It'll be worth it. Yeah, hundred percent. I love that man because I can relate to that so much. Because being a business with myself, like the yeah. amount of the amount of people saying, "Why would you do that? Why do you want to yeah. do a job?" Or like teachers, like when I was, I remember when I was younger, man, I used to like say I wanted to own like, like I have a business out last year, but 
I had this in my head since I was like 10 that I want to have my own business. And I just say yeah. to my parents, you know, act up. And the amount of people that just be like, ah, so why do you want to do that? Stupid. And yeah. I was like, in the back of my head, I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to prove them wrong, like you were saying there. And yeah. the satisfaction from it is incredible. But I think people just don't understand, not everybody, of course, but especially young kids and stuff like that, they don't understand the importance of failure. But I don't think we're educated on it. Yeah, or informed on it. Like, definitely. You're, not, you're, not, you're never taught in school, like, if you don't make it, like, you can't make it. Do you get me? You're never taught yeah, to keep exactly. going. Like, there's yeah, always exactly. A... Exactly. And then, like, on that then as well, CJ, like, for you personally, what's it like being a professional footballer? Like, can you express it in just a couple of words or a sentence or whatever? Like, how, uh, how, how's the feel being a professional footballer? So, uh, it's a couple of years now, like, I booked Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like, you always set out to do it and then mm. you get told you're signing your professional contract, you're like, oh, it's actually happening. But I don't think I'll, I'll actually take it in until I've finished, if you get me? Yeah. It's like, at the, mo- yeah. at the moment, because I'm going through, I'm thinking, oh, it's, like, it's my job now, it's like, just go through yeah, it. But yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I look back at it in 10 years' time and I'm thinking, whoa, I've actually, I've actually done what I set out to do. I've, I've actually yeah. done it. Like, I've completed something in life. Like I've, mm. even even if I was a professional footballer for a year like I, I was able to, to say I was actually a yeah. professional footballer do you get me regardless yeah, of how 100%. little or long you were doing that I was doing this job I've actually completed the goal and mm. then when you're in the goal yeah. or when you've got there to, to get to the next level so now my, mine is to go a league higher play a higher team and then yeah. keep going trying to play as high as possible and yeah, yeah, yeah. try to do, do it before I retire so that's, that's, that's the game now to keep putting in the years and the, the, the work on the pitch and yeah, it's just obviously like you, do, you like doing something you love makes you happy. So why not do mm. it? Why would you sacrifice yeah. doing something you don't like or don't love for the sake of going for something that you actually love? Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Because you always get the best work done when you're happy. You yeah. like you have games where you're where you're not happy and you want performance well, but the games that you do, you are playing and you're happy. You you do ten times better. So it's, it's the thing of trying to work out. Like everyone's not going to be happy all the time. That's just yeah, the way yeah. everyone is. Like, regardless, I'm not happy all the time. You have down days where you're like, oh, I couldn't like you go into a game. You're like, oh, I could have done this or done this. Yeah. But then it's then it's like next game try to be happy, and then you 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 mm. know it's a difference of, of of that. I always get told I smile a lot, but one smile could could lead to another smile. Like, I could see someone in the supermarket mm. smile, and I could pass on that smile, and then be like, okay. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. It could be a catchy thing, but yeah, just just be in happy in what you do. Don't sat don't set up for something that you're not happy with doing yeah 100% man go, go go just go chase whatever you need to chase just be happy regardless if you've got to do something that you don't want to do for like a year then make sure in two years time you're doing something that you do love yeah man that's the absolute fucking you're spitting facts there man you're spitting facts mm. um, like for the people listening or watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify or wherever you're listening to like that's a voice coming from a professional footballer that like I'm always preaching it but I think people just get sick of my voice after a while to be doing things that you actually enjoy doing and you're happy doing it but as CJ yeah. said there you can be better at what you're doing but at the same time if you're in a shit storm for a while I'm just going to give me for example when I finished college I was in a job that I didn't like now it's not like I I, just, I was bored in the job but I like the yeah. people but yeah. I, had to, I had to go through that pain for two and a half years to actually build up skill set, get the confidence to set up my own business and go from yeah. there. So like, see jobs, you know, building up, going, moving from Ireland to England, obviously nerve wrecking, you know, going from club to club, loan, Sheffield United, all that kind of yeah. stuff. And then he's there he is now. So like, it's not like, it's not linear in the slightest and never will be. Never. But if it's going to make you happy, go for it 100%. If you fail, you fail, keep going basically. Yeah, 100%. It's like everything, like to get the happy things in life, you've got to go through the bad stuff. Yeah, there's no easy path. You can't just do something straight away and be happy. There's, there's, I don't think it's like I don't think there's any possible way. Like you get yeah. the richest people in the world, they won't be happy. They've got all the money in the world, they still won't be happy. You get me? Mm. Like regardless of what you've got, you just got to you got to be happy. You live you live once. It's like you got to yeah. make the most of what you you like. You got to be able to sit sit down when you're older and be like, you know, what, actually, I've done I've done well in life. Yeah, you can look you look back and say, you know, what, actually, I might not have got I might not have done as much as I wanted to do, but I was happy doing it. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, yeah. That'll be the main thing because people will go through terror and be like, "Oh, why did I do that? I could have done. I could have could have changed my. I could have changed my career ten years ago. Like, why am I still yeah. sitting this?" And then, you know, people get comfortable of doing a certain job. It's like I get family members and they're like, "Oh, uh, why why would you sit in sit in a job that you're you're comfy doing and you just know everyone there, mm. but it's not really what you want to be doing?" Yeah, it's not pushing or anything. Yeah, you're just sitting there because you're earning money at the moment and like it's paying your bills and it's comfy. 
but why not try go a step further and actually try change and do something you're going to be happy doing yeah 100 percent, man 100%. And you're going to be happy happy to be walking through the, the front doors of any building you walk into whether it's an office building a shop or or, or like me uh, the football the football ground yeah and for somebody who's listening cj or watching or whatever somebody who's in that situation where they're comfy life isn't too hard it isn't too easy they're just, the majority of people to be honest but that person knows they have something extra that they can give to the world and be happy what advice would you give to somebody who's stuck in a position of that comfy bubble and they want to get out of it yeah, I'd, just say, I'd just say obviously when you're in the comfort bubble you've got to be just be aware obviously just, just have a look around like there's no, there's no reason why you can't go looking at other things while you're still at, at the same place you get me mm. you might find something like say you go online say if you're looking you're in a job and you're like comfy at the moment just, just go online, have a, have a look about. You might see other jobs in, in something like in a different sector. They'd be like, oh, that, that really intrigues me. Like, mm. And then say, worst case, you um, get that job. You end up going for that job. You're leaving your old job. Obviously, you're going to miss the people. That, people always miss the people that you leave behind and the friends that you make. Yeah. But then you go into this new job, it might not work out. And that's, that's, yeah, the, risk yeah. you're be willing, that's the risk you're going to be willing to take. You might go there and the people might be horrible. But that's the risk you're going to be, take, be able to take to be able to, to find the place where you're happy. So you might, mm-hmm. you might jump to that place and not be happy. But then you start looking again after a couple of months and you'll be like, the same kind of job comes up in a different sector. You might go there and that'd be the, the best decision you've ever made. Mm. So sometimes you've got to take risks to get rewards. So regardless of the job, you've got to try to think, oh, it's, it could be risky, but am I willing to take the risk? Like I might go there, it might be horrendous. What, are you mm. going to be willing to take that risk for a year of horrendous? Like, or, yeah. or a couple of months, even a month to be able to then be able to find 10 years of happiness in something they enjoy. Yeah, yeah, I guess you, you, right. you'll always you'll always have to risk something to get a reward, regardless of what it is. You can't just jump into something, or you might you might even get lucky and and jump into the, that job and be like, oh, I found like I'm so happy yeah. here, like I'm happy working in now. But sometimes people people think that when they jump from one place to another, it has to be happy straight away. Yeah, or that place has to be the place to be. Otherwise, like why did I do it? But it's always about the outcome of it could be a risk or it could be a reward. And if it's a mm. risk, just just move on to the next one. You've got to be yeah, motivated yeah, yeah. to keep to keep going regardless of what you're doing. Like, just keep yeah. going to, until, until you find that happiness. Mm. That's a great answer, man. Really good good answer. I have one more question for you, CJ. Just from talking to you there, you obviously seem like a very obviously driven, focused, but a person who has an incredible mindset. And I, I love mindset. Yeah. And a big part of what, especially, I don't know what you would have noticed over in England, I just noticed, you know, say if somebody does a bad pass over in Ireland, they self-talk themselves into having a bad game. Yeah. Say, you know, that kind of way. What's your kind of self-talk and your self-awareness like? You seem to be very aware of your emotions and your everything you're doing. You, you seem to obviously yeah. like, seem to talk really well to yourself. So, like, what, how would you, like, what way do you do self-talk with yourself and how aware are you of yourself? Yeah, it's like, obviously, as you say, if someone does a bad pass, like, like, I'll do bad pass. I could do three part bad passes in a row and, you know, you, keep thinking oh, I'll miss a big chance early in the game yeah. and you're thinking to yourself oh god like you think about it for the next 10 minutes mm. but it's then trying to it's trying to like obviously then sometimes it can go the opposite way and you just end up having a whole bad game that like, might just you not be your day but like, yeah you're just do a bad game sometimes you're going to have them bad moments if, with, in any kind of job you're going to have a bad day as do with something yeah 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 and it's then it's about if I do have a bad game or say if I make three bad passes I'll then make, try to make sure the next one goes to someone or Mm. Next pass is good, or try to set up chance, or, or try to do better with the next thing. So it's like I try. That's what I always try to do. I try put the errors out and I try to focus on the next thing and task. But obviously, yeah. if you have a bad day, then you got to think about the next day. Put it yeah, for that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Learn, learn from what you did in that day, and bring it into the next. So then the mistakes you are making in, in that last one. So say like me a game, I'd probably look back at. I'd probably get video sent to me. I'd ask for the video sent to me, and then look back at what I did bad mm. and where what I should have done. Yeah. So the next time I get put in that position, I'll try do, try do the right thing or try do the thing again. But but even that, the next day it might not go right again. It mm. Might take you f- three bad days to get five right days or, yeah. or one right day. So you gotta be gotta be clued onto it. It's like it is it is hard mentally because you always everyone always thinks about the negative a lot more deeper. Yeah. So obviously you gotta break it down and just just take the positives out of it. 
that you because doing bad things will will make you learn something more than doing something good. You learn more from doing bad than you will from doing good. Because mm. because when you do good, you don't really think about you like oh, like your emotions will be happy, so you're not even thinking yeah. about what you just done. Whereas if you do bad, you break it down. You're thinking, oh, this is where I went wrong. This is mm. what I need to do. This is how I improve myself personally. Yeah. So that's that's what I do personally. Like if I have a bad game, I have a bad. Game. I can't I can't play every every game in my career well. Like I'll have yeah. half bad games, half good games. And then people always remember you for the bad stuff, but it's more personal. You you remember yourself for doing the good things. Mm. That's cool, my man. What a fucking answer! Thank you so much for that. Um, CJ, man, I, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I knew that we get fucking a bit more detail into it than the live. Yeah. Um, for the boys and girls, men and women watching the on YouTube, Spotify, or say little clips on Instagram, wherever you're watching it, basically. Let us know what you took out of the podcast, guys. Let us know either some myself or a CJ message. Let us know what valuable information that you took away the most from it. But CJ, man, thank you so much for coming on the Happy Podcast. You're the four guests, man. I really, really appreciate it, man. I actually enjoyed that Anytime, so much. Anytime, man. Anytime, man. Absolute pleasure. Enjoyed it yourself, yeah. Um, Absolute keep, pleasure. Keep happy, man. Keep happy. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>